All right, this is our last lecture recording for chapter four on forecasting. And in this video, we're going to go over regression analysis. That is another forecasting technique that we can use to look out in the future uh, and predict uh, something, uh, whatever it is that we're trying to predict, whether it's sales or consumption or utilization, um, we can uh, look out in the future pr to predict something um, uh, a few years out. Now, the other thing about linear regression or regression analysis uh, to take into consideration is the big difference in regression analysis and how it's different from the least squares method is that our uh, independent variable is no longer time. So now we're going to be able to look at two different data points and they don't have to be time to see if there is a trend, uh, a linear trend in two data points that'll help us to make a forecast. So the example that we're going to use uh, for today with regression analysis is what's payroll in a specific city versus sales for a construction company. And it, it doesn't matter what year it is. In the least squares example that we went over, it was year one, year two, year three, year four. In this case, it's going to be two variables and one of the independent variables or the independent variable is no longer time. So that's the big difference with regression analysis. It's a straight line mathematical model to describe the functional relationship between independent and dependent variables and that independent variable, the y hat, is no longer time. Your formula is still the same. It's <clears throat> y hat is com the computed variable of the, uh, the computed value of the variable to be the predicted dependent variable. A is your y axis intercept, B is your slope of the regression line, and X is the independent variable, not time. And then once again, I will go over an example of how to do this linear regression example that we're going to do together for nodal construction. I will do it in Microsoft Excel at the end of this video. Okay, so nodal construction company renovates old homes in West Bloomfield, Michigan. Over time, the company has found that its dollar volume of renovation work is dependent on West Bloomfield's area payroll. Management wants to establish a mathematical relation to help predict sales. Okay, so if you take a step back and you think about that, Nodal Construction thinks that the more people make higher area payroll in the city, then the more construction there will be. And logically that makes sense. If I were to give my wife a bunch of cash, she would want to re renovate our home. So they have seen a trend that they believe is there, and so they want to use linear regression to see if they are right and if they can predict future sales based off of uh, the the independent variables and the, uh, yeah, the independent variables. So we're going to walk through the first couple steps exactly the same way we did with least squares, but uh, the difference is uh, the variables. Okay. So here is all the data that was given to us. You can see you've got area payroll in billions. So 1 billion in payroll equals 2 million in sales, sales for Nodel construction company. When area payroll was 3 billion, their sales was 3 million. When area payroll was 4 billion, their sales were 2.5 million. So you're going to calculate your x squared, which is once again just your x squared, and your x multiplied by y. So that's payroll multiplied by sales gives you your xy. You take the sum of all of them, and in this case, your n is 6. So you've got six data points, okay? Six data points, and those data points are not time. So you've got six data points, and you will use that as your n. So to find your x bar, you take 18, that's the sum of your x, divided by six, and that gives you a three, so your x bar is three. Your y bar is the sum of your y's, divided by your n, which is six, and that gives you 2.5. So you now have your x bar and your y bar, and now we can calculate the slope and our y axis intercept. So I'm gonna go through this a little bit fast because we, we, again, we did this on the last video, but you've got all of the data that you need to calculate your slope. Okay, you calculated your, your x squared, your xy, you've calculated your x bar and your y bar, you plug all of them in, and that gives you your slope, your b of point two. Your A, which is your y axis intercept, is merely going to be 
So you plug all of that data in as well, your y bar minus your slope multiplied by the x bar, and that gives you an a or a y axis intercept of 1.75. So the linear regression equation is y hat equals a plus bx, or what that means is sales is going to equal 1.75 plus 2.5 multiplied by area payroll. Now, we've, we've created our uh, linear regression equation. We have it, okay? 1.75 plus 0.25. And I realize we walked through that very quickly. But again, the how we did that step-by-step step is in the last lecture recording. So you've got your uh, linear regression equation. So now the Chamber of Commerce expects that next year's area payroll to be $6 billion. Okay, $6 billion. So um, a slight decrease from this period, but much larger than some of these others. So area payroll is expected to be $6 billion. So when we plug that into our equation, we have now calculated that estimated sales for nodal construction company are $3.25 million. So $3.25 million. Okay. So you're done, kind of. You've calculated out what sales would be for $6 billion in area uh, payroll. So your answer is 3.25 million in sales. That's the forecast for next year's sales when area payroll is expected to be 6 billion. But is this a good forecast? So in the last video on when least squares, when I walked through the Microsoft Excel example, we had, when we pulled up our slope or our trend line, you could see that there was an R squared on there. Okay, the R squared ended up being 0.8125. So for this example, our R squared is 0.8125. What does that mean? Okay, so what is the R squared? And, uh, and, and is this a good forecast? Is what we wanna know is, is there a good correlation between area payroll and construction sales? So when we add the trend line in Microsoft Excel, it's going to give us the coefficient of determination. That's an R squared. That's what you can see for this example for nodal construction was 0.8125. It says R squared of 0.8125. That is our coefficient of determination. That's the percentage of the variation in the dependent variable that results from the independent variable, okay? Our R, which is simply taking the square root of the R squared, is a measure of strength of the linear relationship between the independent and dependent variable. For your R squared, or your coefficient of determination, that number will always be between 0 and 1. Okay, between 0 and 1. For the correlation of coefficient, it will be between negative 1 and 1 because you can have a strong negative relationship and a strong positive relationship, okay? But for the coefficient of determination where it's a percentage, it always has to be between zero and one. So our correlation coefficient, RR, this is a measure of the strength of the linear relationship between the independent and dependent variables. You can see over on the left, you can have a perfect negative correlation of negative one. That's pretty hard to get a perfect negative correlation, but you can go all the way to negative one. On the right hand side, you can have a perfect positive correlation up to one. Anything in the middle just means that, that there isn't as much of a correlation between the two variables. Okay, so it's therefore if it's closer to zero, it's weak or it's a there's a lousy correlation. It's just not a strong correlation. But as you get closer to negative one, or plus one, there is a strong correlation in the forecast. What that looks like charted out is you can see that this is your one, a perfect positive correlation on the far right. For most analysis, like the one we just saw with nodal construction, where there was a 0.825 or something close to that R squared, when we take the square root of that, we get a number close to that as well that's gonna put us somewhere in this range. So that would be a positive correlation, which means that there's a strong correlation 
between area payroll and construction. You can also go down here to negative one on the far left, a perfect negative correlation. It's okay to have a strong negative correlation. That does not mean it's a bad correlation. It's a strong negative correlation if you want something to go down. If you're trying to measure two variables to see if pollution is going down, you want a strong negative correlation. If you're looking at two variables and you're wanting to see, is my sales going to go up? You want a strong correlation between those variables to see if this happens, what can I expect for my forecast for next year? And is it a strong correlation or not? Is my forecast any good? This is another way of measuring forecast accuracy by looking to see if there's a strong correlation between the variables. So you want it to be as close to one or negative one as possible. So what does it mean? So when we did nodal construction, <clears throat> we got an R squared of 0.8125. So that indicates there is a strong dependence, okay, between the dependent variable and the independent variable. Okay, there's a strong dependence in the two. To get your correlation coefficient, your R, you're going to take the square root of R squared. Okay, the R squared is given to you when you do the trend line in Microsoft Excel. To find your R, you take the square root of that. And in this example, you would get an R of 0 0.9014. Therefore, there's a strong positive correlation. So areas, area payroll and the construction firm sales, it's a 0.9 R. So there is a strong correlation in those two variables. So this is a good forecast. This is a good model that they've got here. Their hunch was correct that as area payroll goes up, construction to their construction revenue goes up as well. And again, just using this, this same example, if I gave my wife money, she'd go renovate our house too. So there's a strong correlation in the two. All right, so that is the linear regression uh, analysis. It's very similar to least squares. You will actually do it in Microsoft Excel exactly the same way, but you've got your correlation data. So you've got your coefficient of determination that when you add that button, it's going to tell you if there's a strong correlation or not. You just need to interpret whether or not there is a strong correlation given the R squared that is, that is calculated. And in this example for nodal construction, there is a strong correlation. Okay, so how do we do this in Microsoft Excel? Again, we'll do this really quickly here in just a second, but steps to doing linear regression in Microsoft Excel. Step one, open up Excel, add your X and your Y data, uh, insert a chart, make it a scatter chart, and then uh, make sure that there's a linear relationship. You might not want to waste your time um, you know, going any further if the, if the plots are all over the place. Um, but as long as there's a fairly strong linear relationship, just keep going, add that trend line, click on linear so that you get a linear trend line and then uh, options you're going to want to select display equation and your r squared value you're going to want to click those two buttons that'll show you here in just a second you're going to calculate your forecast and you're going to evaluate the correlation so we're going to see do we have a good strong correlation so for node all construction you can see you would go you would add area payroll your uh, as as your x you would add um node all sales, annual sales as your Y variable. You do the scatter plot diagram, then you click on add trend lines and then display equation in R squared. So just like we did in the last example for least squares, we're going to do the same thing for nodal construction and we're going to get our trend line and our R squared to see if there's a strong correlation. All right, here we are. I have already added area payroll and annual sales uh, as our X and our Y variables. So you Highlight the data that you want to put into a chart, go to insert, click on the buttons, depending on the version of Excel that you have. I click on scatter diagram. It puts all of my data into the chart. You can see that there are the different data points. Now there's only five data points instead of six, even though our N is six, there's only five data points because area payroll was $1 million twice. Okay, so area payroll down here was $1 million twice and annual sales in those years was always two million dollars so when area payroll was one billion annual sales was two million so there's two dots right here not one so even though there's five plots on this chart there are your n is six so you can add the data labels if you would like that is your annual sales you can add your trend line and uh, once again i'm a little off to the side here 
So you will want a linear chart and a linear trend line. Down below that, you will click on the display equation on chart and display the R squared value on chart. Okay, it has now done that for me. And so we have now calculated the same trend line that you did uh, a couple slides ago manually. So we've got y equals 0.25x plus 1.75. In the example we did for nodal construction, our x was 6 billion in area payroll, and that gave us the answer of 3.25 million in annual sales. So you can see right here where that line crosses at 6 billion in area payroll, it's right about at 3.25. Your R squared is 0.8125. So when you look at your R squared and your R, you can see that there is a strong correlation between the two variables. And so this is a good forecast for nodal construction. Okay, so you've now completed a regression analysis and you've uh, determined the strength of the correlation for that type of forecast. Uh, we are now done with chapter four. Congratulations on forecasting. Uh, we now move on to our next module.